Recently, I stumbled over some old boxes which inspired me to do something more hands-on for a change. I challenged myself to only use stuff that I had accumulated over the years, most parts having been sitting and collecting dust for a very long time. As the base of my build, I used my old Meccano model construction system which I loved to play with as a kid and always kept close with me since. As it turns out, even as an adult this comes in handy if you like to build something fast and sturdy. I suppose you could do something similar with Legos, wood or a 3D printer, but I used what I had available. Next, I used some old stepper motors and wheels to build a foundation for everything that was yet to come. Quick side note, at a later point in time I opted for a different set of wheels which came from a never finished Ultimate Wheel Roberts magazine kit which according to Wikipedia must now be around 20 years old. Anyway, having a chassis, motors and some wheels then led to me putting a bit of everything I could find on top of it. Starting with an Arduino and a breadboard to power two stepper drivers. In case you don't know, these so called motor drivers are required to power the coils inside the stepper enclosure which need a lot more juice than what the Arduino can provide. But more on this in a minute. In my case I had planned to power the drivers with a battery kit but for now it's a simple 12 volt external power supply which does the job. Remember, safety goes first so I put a fuse in between. Whenever the Arduino is not powered by the USB connection, a 5 volt tension regulator provides the other half of the breadboard with TTL power. Apart from the Arduino, this then also powers the LCD display which I used for easier debugging. It also powers the optoelectronic distance measuring sensor which I added in there to avoid driving into things. This sensor together with my trusty webcam sit on a server motor controlled platform which allows adjusting the viewing angle as desired from the PC user interface. I would also like to highlight the MVPs, electrical tape, double sided tape and hot glue which are essentials. You might be wondering why I put a webcam on it and the answer is simply for nostalgic reasons. My last robot was built in 2007 and had a certain feature set which I tried to replicate, at least partly, with the least amount of effort here. This is also the reason why I wanted to control the machine from my PC as I had done the same back then. Apart from the janky engineering this time around and the fact that I have not used any wireless modules, I am quite happy with the bare bones robot that I ended up with. Most of the time the robot is simply waiting for commands transferred by the PC. Whenever a command is received, it is being executed immediately. Each command directly includes the parameterization to avoid any complexity at all. Who needs fancy communication protocols anyway? Examples include move forward 100, which corresponds to about 30 cm or 12 inches of driving forward, or move server 30, which makes the camera look up. A nice old fashioned condition handling block then calls the corresponding subroutines. In order to avoid driving into things, the forward drive mode checks regularly whether anything is getting too close for comfort, in which case the movement is aborted. The most tricky part is probably the stepper loop which requires a basic understanding of how these motors work. You can imagine the inside having coils which produce a magnetic field if you power them. In addition to these coils, a magnet is sitting in the middle being rotated depending on which coil is active. Activating the coils in a specific order then results in wheel movement. Looking at my implementation, there are several ways how this could have been done cleaner and more efficiently. Examples being the use of acceleration ramps, which allow faster speeds, or half step mode, which increases the movement resolution. Of course, these were completely ignored in my code to keep things easy and simple, and not because I was too lazy. On the PC side, I used the Unity user interface toolkit as it allows simple drag and drop UI composition. The dynamic webcam texture object is used to grab images from the webcam which are then placed on the UI background panel. On top of this panel we have some overlaid buttons and parameter boxes which allow sending commands over the serial port to the Arduino using a tiny bit of IO code. The status label is also read regularly from the Arduino and allows the microcontroller to report back if something changes. As usual, all code is linked in the description if anybody feels adventurous. This project definitely gave me a bunch of new ideas for the future. Making the robot wireless and autonomous might be next. Even though I like the cable tail dragging behind the robot, it somewhat limits its mobility. 
This project also made me reminisce about my older, almost forgotten creations. Unfortunately right now I cannot easily get to my old robot from 2007, but I would like to get it back up running and present it in a future video. That's all I have to say and I thank you for watching.